In this episode of Carpe Diem. Over 800,000 of us over the age of 75 are currently living with vision loss. In today's episode, we discuss our aging eyes. Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome. The big topic today is our eyes and how aging affects our vision. But first, let's visit with Leah Bolton and take a look at this week's Zippy Zoomer. There we go. <laughs> you got no now hands. we're in business. You had no hands to hold on. That's You're right. right. I'm holding on with my hands. <laughs> hey, Jim, how's it going up there? I'm doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> We are back here with our latest and greatest Zippy Zoomer. Not just one today, we have two, Jim and Marianne. They're beyond retirement and they're successfully running an orchard. Let's get to work. <laughs> okay, tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> I'm ready, come on Jim. It's what's called niche marketing, yeah. and it's finding something that you can do better than somebody else. Yeah. And it's not that we can't grow a better apple than the Okanagan, but we can have an apple that is fresh off the tree and put it in the customer's hand in 24 to 48 hours. That's right. And the Okanagan can't do that. Okay, so there's your pristine. This apple pristine. Then all of a sudden everyone's knocking down your door. Well, yeah. not everyone, but enough to make it worthwhile. Yeah. Jim does all the pruning of the trees, and then uh, I and another friend that helps me, uh, we do the thinning of the apples, so you have to take off extra apples so that uh, you don't have uh, teeny tiny apples to sell. Okay. And then I guess we have a little bit of a break. And, and uh, then you do the picking. And then we're starting the picking. So the first and then the selling. Yeah, and then the selling. You know, if it's fun, it's not working. If it is, not fun as anything is working. Well, Jim is faster than I am. He has had a lot more practice. <laughs> okay, so I'm supposed to roll it. Just roll it up and use it to break off like, right the stem. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right, we're going to keep picking these apples. In the meantime, we're going to head back to the studio with Carmen. If you have a Zoomer to nominate, don't forget to nominate them at zippyzoomer at carp.ca. This one looks tasty. That looked like fun. Now, let's focus on our topic. Dr. Beering, what's an overview of the aging eye? Our eyes actually start aging from the day we were born, right? Um, most of the results of that aging aren't seen until you're about 40 years of age. Uh, some of the more basic things that we notice with the eyes, the first signs are, you know, needing reading glasses, uh, cataracts, everybody knows that, some might have heard of glaucoma or macular degeneration. So, so those are some of the, the buzzwords that you'll hear about aging eyes. When did it start for you, Bruce? About age 40. For a lot of us, yes. I'm at that, that point where I'm just learning, you know, how to deal with the whole um, losing the reading th concept and, and having to uh, get that little bit of extra help myself. Well, I'm looking forward to this panel. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get an eye exam. Up next on Carpe Diem. Now this is going to give the doctor an idea how your distance vision is doing. Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. Let's continue our conversation on our aging eyes. What's the process really for aging eyes? Well, like I said before earlier, that it starts from the day that you're born, and, and a lot of the damage from the eye is done from the UV rays. So, so as we age, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the UV rays hit our lens of our eyes, and, and they start to make our lenses more rigid, and that leads to the first sign, which is needing reading glasses, and, and Bruce can attest to this. Uh, Bruce, you needed reading glasses at some point. How old were you? reading glasses at 40, and it doesn't surprise me looking back because I didn't wear a hat, I didn't wear sunglasses, yeah. and I had a lot of sun exposure. Typically, I mean, uh, you can't avoid the UV rays. I mean, you're going to get them, even if you do wear sunglasses and hats, but you're just going to prolong the inevitable. Uh, so, so is this why I see a lot of uh, children now with sunglasses? Oh, 100%. You come to get an eye exam with me, I am recommending children to wear sunglasses. 
uh, you know, 50 years ago, we didn't really notice, uh, we didn't know the detrimental effects of, of, of not getting UV protection. Uh, and so that's, that's why we start with the kids at a young age. Well, kids' eyes are too are a lot more susceptible to um, UV damage and actually, you know, a good percentage of our damage is done during um, that time actually, as well. Yeah, I believe it was about, uh, by the age of 20, 80% of the UV damage has already been done. So when you went to get your first eye test, mm -hmm. what did they find? That's a long time ago. <laughs> when was it? How old were you when you got your first eye exam? Probably 40. Okay, so I the reading problem is what drove you in. I think so, yeah? okay. yes. You know, my last eye test was years ago and it was time for another one. So I went to visit you at your iris clinic and watch what we did. Perfect. And chin right on that chin rest. This one takes a photo of the back of your eye. So we're gonna get a picture of your retina, okay? Now this is going to give the doctor an idea how your distance vision is doing. This machine tests your peripheral vision. Every time you see that movement, you're going to click the button. Beautiful. Keep going just like you are. So we've already done pre-testing. We had three pre-testing machines. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little bit of your lifestyle issues, right? And some of the concerns that you have with your lifestyle. We're going to go ahead and test your prescription. And then we're going to do a little health check and then we'll be done. So can you tell me a little bit about the machines that we're using and what they do? Here, so this machine right here, everyone's familiar with this guy right here. So this actually helps me give the actual prescription. So by giving you choices. So this is the subjective uh, prescription, right? So we did the objective out there. So you and I have no influence. Just the machine right. reads it. This gives the subjective reading. I was to go like this. One, two, three. Is that nice and clear? Oh my god. Good. Four better mm -hmm. or five? Let's go. I say four. four. Very good. Show you what macular generation does look like. That's this guy right <gasps> here. Oh dear. And your eye looks much more like that. Yeah, right? mine looks just like that <laughs> yeah, one. Exactly. Yay. So you don't have to be a doctor. You can see for yourself that I'm okay, right? Let's take you off to our optician, Charmaine, who'll help you select some glasses and go through some of the products with you, pros and cons, and all the options that are available. Right. And that's where I'm afraid of is all the options. <laughs> this is the How do you stuff. pick one? That was my first real in-depth eye exam. Can you elaborate on my results? First of all, let's just, everybody calm down. <laughs> Your results are good, there's nothing to worry about. Uh, very common, uh, you know, we found a light prescription for the distance uh, and, and we talked about the reading, the, the boost that you need for the reading. And honestly, those are the two main outcomes from your eye exam. And Charmaine, typically if you get your eyes checked every year, does that mean that you might expect that your prescription will change every year as well? No, not at all. Um, you know, ideally it stays pretty stable. You may go years without any change whatsoever. But, uh, you know, there's always other ways that you can make your vision even better. So let me bring you back to the question of, as we age, what's the degeneration of our sight? The big game changer is the lens in the eye has become rigid. So it can't focus anymore for up close. That's the real science behind it. Uh, so as it becomes rigid, uh, you can't focus anymore. You have to have glasses to do that focusing for you, which you weren't, which you aren't able to do, right? Mm -hmm. As we move along, it gets even worse and uh, it starts to become opaque and that's where cataracts come in and I think Bruce mm -hmm. had an experience with that too. So And that just happens, it's just a, like a blanket? Very gradual, very slow uh, and, and Bruce, you can attest to this, what your experience was when this is ha how this happened with you. My optometrist monitored it, I think, for two years before finally sending me to the ophthalmologist. Very yeah, nice. I think that's a good point too. Like once you hit 40, it's so important to be going in every single year because even if you find that your your vision feels okay and you know you're like well Charmaine I'm driving okay you know I can still see the street signs and that um, you want to catch any subtle things that are going wrong before you start having um, vision loss issues. It's just a jump in on that point too is is uh, it's very gradual but uh, you know um, I've had 50 year olds that have cataract surgery done too. So, so it's not always the you know, 75 or 80 year olds. You've had 50 year olds and it, it's lifestyle. It, you know, if you s grew up on a farm uh, and, and you, know, you spent outdoors all the time or you're a fisherman, you're on the water all the time because water does intensify UV rays, you may be younger. There's certain medications that can cause uh, you know, cataracts to develop a little bit faster, uh, trauma to the eyes, diabetes. So, very important to get in at 40 because a lot of people will be like, oh, my grandparents had them done when they're 80. I'm only 50. Why do I need to go in? Mm, there's, there's reasons to go in. Well, I'm worried we're going to start seeing it even younger and younger with our devices and technology and, and other 
now we're being exposed to blue light in many of our environments. And, and blue light contributes to uh, uh, the degeneration of our lenses and stuff like that too. So, so they play a big Maybe role in that. Maybe coming sooner. Earlier and the UV earlier. rays are, are more intense now than ever before also. They're, they're not the same UV rays like 50 years ago. The ozone is being depleted and the intensity of the UV rays is getting stronger and stronger. Oh, that's right. Our, our son-in-law had uh, cataract surgery. It was the mid-50s. And he needed it desperately too. Right, so there's two right there that are, you know, on the young side for this, and and you know, it's a it's a big concern that people in our families and that may be having these experiences even younger and younger. So the we nice catch thing those about early. the nice thing about cataract surgery though is that it is easily fixed, and, and again, Bruce can attest to this. It's a very simple surgery. What, what I'm hearing here is that the aging eye can age before your body can. Yeah. At point. Wow. We're going to take a short break, but before that, we asked, how's your eyesight? Only thing I was told was uh, by the surgeon uh, for reading. I'd probably need uh, glasses. So uh, <clears throat> he suggested go to the dollar store. Not that good. I'm going to see a doctor to go get cataract surgery on my, on my right eye. Not the greatest. Uh, it's deteriorating. Uh, macular degeneration, it's called age related macular degeneration. Carpe diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. Welcome back. Allie from Houston, BC said she had age-related macular degeneration. Bruce had cataracts. And my dad had, uh, had macular degeneration. Yep. He was um, he an avid golfer, an avid reader. And he lost the ability to do both as well as lost his license. Rode a bicycle when he couldn't see, had an accident, broke his hip. and. Right. That was the end of his life. So macular degeneration is one of the ones where you really can start with preventative medicine on that one. Um, it is called age-related for a reason because it's the buildup of that UV exposure that we alluded to that causes macular degeneration. It's the UV buildup in the eyes. So this is where we start talking about dietary things. We talk about the sunglasses, uh, lifestyle habits like not smoking, uh, UV protection because of the UV rays that cause it, so wearing sunglasses. And I think, Bruce, you had mentioned Father never did any of that. <laughs> no, he, he played golf, he worked outside a lot, yeah. and he, uh, he had a, a, a visor. Yep. No sunglasses. Yep. Just a visor when he played golf. Yeah. And, and that's the era where, I mean, let's face it, that's the era that people used to put baby oil on their skin when they used to go sun tanning. And the, you know, now yeah. everyone's about UV protection, UV protection, UV protection. Well, likewise, sunglasses is that UV protection. Bruce, did I, your doctor, recommend any supplements? Do you take anything? Uh, not for the eyes, no, not specifically. This is where, so we talked about the lifestyle choice about not smoking and wearing sunglasses, but Charmaine makes a great point about the alluding to the vitamins. So the dietary stuff that we need to make sure that ours are protected from macular degeneration include things like lutein, which comes from green leafy vegetables like spinach and kale. Uh, we need our, uh, our antioxidants, vitamins A, C, and D. So our orange fruits and vegetables, really good with that. And omega-3s have shown to help too because they're anti-inflammatory. Uh, and, you know, salmon, uh, herring, uh, anchovies. Mm -hmm. So if you get a lot of that in your diet, you don't need to supplement. But, you know, you need to analyze your diet a little bit and say, hey, do I get these nutrition nutrients or not? Do I need to supplement? I do in the diet. And, of course, we have, we do have and take a number of vitamins for us. I wasn't aware it was for eyes, but for yep. other, other yeah. reasons. So when we're looking but at the nutritional bottle, you, you would see those things listed. Yeah. I, I gather, though, that the, the average sunglasses that you buy in the store are not 400. Some of them may be, but the protection um, on the back surfaces may not mm -hmm. be as good, right? The, the anti-reflective coatings may not be as well um, done. Um, the polarization may not be as good, which is another mm -hmm. factor that can really play into the eye comfort and, and help you know protect the eye as well. Um, there's definitely a lot of different technologies out there, and um, as opticians, you know we can 
easily go through the different differences in technology and uh, what can give you that best protection. Le legally in Canada, you have to have 100% UVA UV protection to be s called a sunglass. So if you buy from a reputable location, mm -hmm. not your corner store gas station maybe, <laughs> or the trunk of a car, um, if, you, if you buy them from a reputable place, uh, legally they have to be 100% UVA UV protection, but as Charmaine alluded to, there's a lot of other factors like polarization, mirror coats, blue light filters oh. uh, that, that take it to the next level, but the basic. Well, there's also been a big concern too that um, some of those lenses that, uh, you know, aren't done very well, um, tend to be more, more dimming, causing the, the pupil to be enlarged and um, actually letting in more damaging light um, than something that's uh, Imagine if you quality. put on a tinted lens that had no UV protection, your pupils were enlarged, that means there's more light getting into the back of the eye. You know, I've always spent money on sunglasses, but when I learned I needed reading glasses, I basically went to the drugstore and got some funky frames and that was it. And what a difference it was when you and I had our consultation. Let's take a look at that. Carmen's doing really well today. We had a Fantastic. great eye exam. Help her out pick out some okay. frames and go through some of the products that are available. Like there's different levels of progressives that we can discuss with her. So we have found some fantastic options here for you today. We want something that's gonna fit really good, sit nicely on the bridge of your nose and is, is gonna be nice and comfortable for you. So you know what, I've decided I think these are the perfect glasses for me. We had discussed um, doing a progressive for you. You're going to be able to wear them all the time and still see your computer, drive in them, and read in them. It's just for my office, sure. really, because I think you, we compromise on the lens if it's more than that, right? No, there's no, uh, no. There's lots of great technologies, and you can get really great reading zones and computer zones. The other thing we want to decide upon is because you're on devices. Um, the blue light. Yes. Right. It's very important to be protecting ourselves from the blue light we're getting from our lighting and especially from our computer screens and devices um, all day long. We want that. All these gadgets. I know. So you're going to look towards the camera lens here, all right? Okay. And I'm going to get this lined up as best I can here. All these measurements I have personalized to you and your glasses that you're wearing, okay? So this is good, old school, classic, little, just mark where her pupils are. So I have your measurements now. Um, the glasses will take seven to 10 business days before they arrive here, okay? To take care of them when you're not wearing them. They're not on your face, they're in your case. Okay, we'll <laughs> the case one. along with those. I'm sure that this won't be my only pair. I'm just so very happy to have the first pair. So, I mean, that was honestly a difficult decision, not only to choose the frames, but the types of lenses. There's so many different options. So you have, yeah. um, so what we got for you was the office type lens, right? right. So that's going to be something you're using in your workplace. Yeah. But there's options for you that you can wear all the time, right? Glasses are trendy. People want to, you know, wear them. They're, they're a stylish part of our wardrobe and accessory. Um, you have lots of options to be able to see far and drive in them and still be able to have your reading and, and you know, your close-up work. And your sunglasses as well, um, contact lenses. There's so many different options for so many different types of situations and, and your lifestyle. So just to wrap it up on solutions for me, I got the reading glasses. Um, overall, what are my potential solutions for the level of eyesight that I have right now besides reading glasses. Was that it? Yeah, well, ideally I would put you in a pair of sunglasses next, right? Because you do a lot of driving and everything and um, glare is a big factor in accidents and uh, especially around here you can have the rain, the sun, everything pop out and and uh, you want to make sure your vision is as good and clear as possible. I couldn't agree with you more. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. But first, how does eyesight affect your quality of life? I had to let go a whole lot of things. I used to knit a lot, crochet a lot, but I can't see it anymore. I gave up driving old about three years ago because the, they had enough problems on the highway without me. <laughs> they hurt. Hurt me real bad. I can barely see some of the times. So I ride this thing all the time, and you know, when you're in traffic, you know, you gotta watch, you gotta be able to use your eyes.
Carpe Diem. Seizing the day for Canadians as we age. It's now time to go around the table for our panel's final thoughts on our aging eyes. Bruce? Well, I had my cataract surgery done in 2008, the last one. I got soft lenses, which meant they were prescription lenses. And so I don't need glasses to read anything except small print. I don't use glasses for, for driving, computer work, anything else. How was the procedure? Simple procedure, 20 minutes, including prep time. I had to do, put some drops in my eyes for a few months after, and that was it. The, the, only, the only problem I have now is, is uh, where did I leave my glasses? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't understand that when my wife had hers and she was taking them on and off all the time and put them in different places. Now I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> Charmaine, final thoughts. We are affiliated with CARP, so for all of our CARP members out there, um, there's many advantages um, through Iris and everything that we can do to help you uh, get into your eyewear needs from um, everything from your glasses um, to contact lenses to your sun protection and um, even a lot of the, the nutri nutritional supplements as well. So, you know, prevention is key. That's the, that's the one take home message we can get is, is prevention and it starts with the eye exam and it starts with the eye exam at an early age. Uh, I know we're talking about the aging eyes, but you know, some of these, uh, like the snippets that we shot, uh, shot there, uh, those problems happen because of what they did in their 20s and 30s and 40s, but the results are showing up in their 60s. So again, coming in to get your eye exam uh, on a regular basis, prevention, taking heed with the, the recommendations of sunglasses, nutrition and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Bruce, for being with us, and Charmaine, of course, and Dr. Baring, great, great to meet you and have a test you. with My you. My pleasure. And that's the show. And remember, as our CART president, Moses Nimer, always says, the best way to keep going is to keep going. So stay zippy and carpe diem, seize your day.